We have a brand new coding assistant. It feels like every day we're getting a new one, but this one is special. This is called SWE-Agent, and it is out of a team at Princeton. And it describes itself as agent computer interfaces enable software engineering language models. What does that actually mean? So what makes this special, and it is absolutely blowing up, it's already at three and a half thousand stars, and it was just released a few days ago. But what makes this special is the fact that it performs nearly as good as Devon. So what this project specializes in is fixing real world bugs and issues on GitHub. So you basically just give it a GitHub issue URL, it finds out what's going on, replicates the issue, fixes it and submits a fix as a PR. It is really impressive. And check this out, look at this performance. So this is the SWE bench test performance and everybody saw that Devin had a 13.84%, which again, it was being compared against kind of just core models and not actually like multi-agent frameworks. And But that aside, it performed really well, 13.84%. Now with SWE agent, we're using GPT-4, open source 12.29. And again, it just came out. So very, very impressive and nearly as good as Devin already. And here's an example of what it looks like back and forth. So you basically give it a GitHub issue and it says our reproduction script confirms the issue reported. Min and max are not being converted to R. So then it searches the files for anything related to R, finds the issues, then the responsible file is likely rcode.py. We should open and inspect it. It does that. Then it makes the necessary changes. It is so cool. And here's really why this project is so special. We accomplished these results by designing simple language model centric commands and feedback formats to make it easier for the LM to browse the repository, view, edit, and execute code files. Now, that is something that many projects don't do very well. If you have an existing code base, a large code base, it is very difficult for a language model to understand the entire code base and even understand parts of it because each part is interconnected with other parts of a large code base. The only project I've really seen do this very well is Aider, A-I-D-E-R, and that's because it uses universal C tags, which is essentially a way to give computers a really easy way to search through large code bases. So here are the features that it has. They added a linter that runs when an edit command is issued. We do not let the edit command go through if the code isn't syntactically correct, so that's fantastic. We supply the agent with a special built file viewer instead of just having it cat files, so they actually have a custom file viewer for the model. We found that this viewer works best when displaying just 100 lines in each turn. Very interesting. So I'm not always convinced that providing a language model with just a snippet of code is enough for it to understand the broader context of the code, but apparently it's doing it pretty well. The file editor that we built has commands for scrolling up and down and for performing a search within the file. So you're basically giving an LLM its own custom IDE. And that's kind of cool as a concept. We supply the agent with a special built full directory st string searching command. We found that it's important for this tool to succinctly list the matches. And when commands have an empty output, we return the message saying your command ran successfully and did not produce any output. And yeah, you can install it right away. So I'm gonna show you how to install it and then I'm gonna show you a demo. So the first thing you're gonna to need to do is install Docker and we've been doing that a bunch lately. So go ahead, click on that link. You're gonna open up this page, docs.docker.com slash engine slash install. You're gonna find the relevant Docker desktop app for your operating system, download it and install it. And when it's up and running, you're gonna see this little Docker icon in your taskbar. Then you need to install Miniconda, so something we use quite often on this channel. And if you don't already have it, click this link and you can download the installer right here. So Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. So download the relevant one for your operating system once again. Install it, restart your terminal if you have to. Next, open up Visual Studio Code. We're going to click this button in the top right to toggle the panel, which opens up our terminal. Then we're going to CD to the desktop or wherever you like to store your new projects. Then switch back to the GitHub repository. We're going to look for this green code button. We're gonna click it and then we're gonna click this copy URL to clipboard button right there, copying the GitHub URL. Switch back to VS Code and we're gonna type git clone and then that SWE agent URL, hit enter. Okay, now we're going to CD into it. So CD 
swe-agent. Now here's something cool which this project did that I really like. It actually comes with a Conda environment. So it actually will just set up the Conda environment for us. So let's do that. So if we switch back, we need to just type Conda env create-f environment.yml. And this environment.yml has the definition of our environment that's necessary. So it just reduces the amount of guesswork. So go ahead and click enter. All right, now that that's done, we're going to highlight this right here to activate the environment, copy, paste, conda activate swe-agent, hit enter. Okay, so now it's activated, we can see so right there. Next, we need to run the setup script. So dot slash setup dot sh, hit enter. And this is going to build the Docker image. So again, between Docker and conda kind of coming out of the box with this project, I really appreciate how easy they're making this. It really reduces the headache of Python environment management, package management, dependencies, etc. So to the authors of this project, thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope more projects do this. All right, well, here's something funny. I know I said that it was gonna be a lot easier because it comes with Conda and Docker already ready to go, but I was wrong. I can't get past this error right here. Something with Miniconda, something having to do with my Mac OS being on Apple Silicon. I've tried a few things and I don't know how to fix it. So if you do know how to fix this, drop a comment below. But what I did is I switched over to lightning.ai. Now this video is not sponsored by lightning.ai, but it just made it so much easier. It comes with Docker pre-installed, it comes with Conda, and I simply followed the same steps and now the Docker image is created. Okay, so now it's done. So all those previous steps still work, just follow those, and now I'm starting from here within Lightning. Okay, then it says to create a keys file, so we're gonna do that. Right click over here, new file, keys.cfg, hit enter. Then we're going to paste in these four environment variables. So we have the GitHub token, which is required. We have the OpenAI key, the Anthropic key, and the Together key, all of which are optional. We're gonna be using OpenAI today. So for the GitHub token. So I got my GitHub personal access token and there's instructions for how to do it. Just Google it. It's a few steps, but it's pretty straightforward. Paste it in here just like so. Then I grabbed my OpenAI API key and pasted it in just like so. All right, so we have both of those and we should be ready to go now. Okay, so I think I actually put this keys file in the wrong place, so I'm gonna go ahead and drag it into SWE agent. So now it is in the main part of the SWE agent folder, just like that. Now, apparently to get it running, we just have to run this command. So python run.py, we provided a model name. We have the data path, which is the issue that we're looking to fix and the config file, which is already set up for us. So I'm gonna copy this command I paste it in the command right here just so I can edit it easily. And we're gonna try something very meta. Now, there's actually an issue on SWE agent. Here it is. So run replay.py misses record base commit, et cetera, et cetera. I'm gonna give it an issue from its own repository. So I'm gonna come up here, I'm gonna copy the issue, switch back to lightning. I'm gonna highlight this issue right here, switch it out for this SWE agent issue, highlight the whole thing, Cut, come down here, paste, and then hit enter. And let's see if this works. Okay, environment initialized, loaded data set, beginning task, trying to clone from non-mirror. Now, I really want to plug Grok into this so it's super fast, but for now, we're going to have to deal with GPT-4 speeds. Okay, we got a warning. That seems okay. Initializing agent settings for container. I mean, everything seems to be working. You're going to solve this issue on your own. Your terminal session has started and you're in the repository, et cetera, et cetera. Thoughts. The issue indicates that there is a key error for base commit. Okay, that is correct. So it got the issue well. Here's the code. And remember, it has about a 12% chance of solving the issue, but the fact that it's getting this far is just super impressive. So now that we've located the swenv.py file, let's open it to inspect the code and understand how it works. Now, the file is quite large, 608, 668 lines in total. The error message from the issue points to a key error. Okay, let's use the go to command. So that's the command that is built into SWE agent and we're moving to line 300. So there it is. Okay, we've scrolled to line 300, but have not yet reached the reset method. 
So now let's try 500. So it's basically trying to search for that code. We've scrolled further, but we still have not reached it. Let's keep scrolling. We have reached the end, but not ha but have not found the reset method. So now it scrolls back up to 400. It's just looking for it, but if for some reason it can't find it. Interesting, so it's basically scrolling up and down the file just like any engineer would, and it's trying to find this method. All right, we have found the reset method starting on line 108. Yes, good. To fix this, we need to ensure that base commit is included in self.record before this line is executed. One way to do this would be to add a check, etc. So I think this is the updated code. Okay, the edit has been successfully applied, but there's a duplicate setting and it's fixing it. I mean, this is so cool. All right, ooh, cost limit exceeded, interesting. So there must be a setting somewhere where you can actually limit the cost of GPT-4. And so it already exceeded $2, so fine, thank you for stopping it there. But it seems like it was well on its way to solving this issue. And yep, right there, we can actually set the cost limit. So that's really cool. So it is set by default to $2, we could set it at $10 if we want, and so on. So. Very, very cool. I want to power this with a local model because then it won't cost anything. So there doesn't seem to be a very straightforward way to use a local model, but I suspect that with a little bit of effort, we could get it to work. And I bet that they're going to allow it in future versions since this has only been out for a couple days. So overall, very cool project. Now let me show you a full demo. So I'm about to show you a full demo end to end by one of the authors solving a GitHub issue and preparing a fix for it. Hey, my name is Carlos and today I'm going to show you an example of Sweet Agent resolving an issue from GitHub. So we'll be looking at this issue from SimPy, which is an instance in SweetBench. And we see that the user is reporting at this problem where this matrix operation call insert is producing some unexpected output. So it looks like a straightforward issue. We'll copy this GitHub URL and send this over to the Sweet Agent um, run script. And once that's going, we can, uh, we'll, we'll wait for about a minute or two, but we can look at an example that ran a bit earlier. So here we have Sweet Agent trying to resolve this issue, and it starts off by reproducing the, the bug that's reported, which is always a good first step. So it copies the code from that issue into a new file called reproduce bug, and after running that, we see that we have the same results that are uh, reported in the issue, with this problem being present here at the bottom. So now that we've confirmed that the issue is a problem, is still a problem, we can search the uh, search the, the repository for this call insert function to see where it might be defined, and the model thinks that it is defined in this common.py file. So we open this common.py file in the file editor, and we can look at the different functions that are present, and we identify the eval call insert as being a particular function of interest. So we scroll that into view down on line 81. And after analyzing the code a little bit, the model realizes that there's a problem with the indexing for uh, those the, the values in this matrix operation. So we generate an edit, which is then applied again to this function which can be seen after here between lines 87 through 89. And we go back to our reproduction code to run that again and see how the output has changed. And we see here that the output is actually uh, represents the expected result. So it looks like uh, the issue is resolved. And we clean up our workspace by removing that file and finally submit what we think is the right solution. So that produces this diff that we can evaluate with Sweebench. And after testing on Sweebench, we find that this submission passes the initial test and it doesn't break any of the existing tests. So we can market result. All right, so that's it. This is incredible. I'm so excited to see all of the progress on AI coding helpers. If you liked this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.